So what specifically is going to be on the November 6th ballot or, or what specifically are you fighting to get on the November 6th ballot that people need to know about? Right. So on the November 6th ballot will be the first step towards creating a public bank. Right now, it's illegal for the city to start, or it's not illegal, so to speak, but it's a, it's not in the charter. We need to amend our city charter to allow us to basically start a bank, um, to, to have a public institution to democratize finance. Um, right now, it's only private entities that are allowed to do that. And so that's what the November 6th ballot measure would do. Then what we need to do is we need to basically do the same thing at the state level, right? So the city doing this gives a lot of great pressure and which is why we need so many people to come out and vote. And we need to win this with a huge mandate because then we go up to the state and we go, hey, the city of Los Angeles really wants this. San Francisco wants this. Oakland wants this. You know, um, incorporated counties around, you know, northern central California, southern California want this. Um, let's let's do it. Allow us to do this. And we are being very, very careful to not allow us to get sandbagged by corporate Democrats. That's why we're not trying to do a big state bank which there have been movements for state banks in California. I believe Jerry Brown vetoed one of them. I'm sure um, he did. I'd, I'd right, be shocked if he didn't. Yeah, the only cool thing Jerry Brown ever, ever, ever did was hang out with Linda Ronstadt. Everything else he did fucking sucks. Uh, and it's I, honestly- I, I think the only cool thing he ever did was, was, he, uh, was he inspired a good dead Kennedy song. I think that's the only cool thing he ever did. Yeah, that's <laughs> That wasn't true. even anything he did directly. Right, that was just his actions. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I believe Jerry Brown vetoed it, um, but there, it, it basically was sandbagged the last time it went through. Um, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to make this as simple as possible and trying to allow activists on the ground level um, as much leverage as possible. We believe that if we do this on the municipal level, that folks will be able to have their voices heard more because the closer you are to the street level, the easier it is to have your voice heard about an issue. Um, and not all of us can get up to Sacramento. You know, there's a right. lot more lobbyists in Sacramento than there are in your local city council building. Well, you know, no, I mean, I, I'm doing something hall. similar with municipal internet. Like I'm trying to do something very similar with municipal internet, uh, specifically here where I live in Pasadena and then, you know, uh, branching it out to other parts of Southern California as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't know what type of red tape may exist in the charter. We haven't gotten that far yet, but um, other cities have seen that where the city has, uh, you know, specific things in their charter in regards to only private companies can build right. internet infrastructure. So going on that, uh, and maybe this is a very obvious question, I apologize if it is, but um, is the content in our city charter, was that preemptive measures on behalf of the banks? Um, I don't know. I don't know what the, the preemptive measures were because, um, I mean, I don't know when the charter specifically stated this. Like, I don't know if it was an sure. amendment that did this or not. Um, uh, from what I've gathered, this isn't like a new thing that we're undoing. I think it was it's a very old thing, but that just shows how deeply entwined, you know, the profiteers are with our public goods like with the internet you know that's fucking bullshit that mm -hmm. you know we've we've seen time and time again that privatization only benefits the rich you know if you want if you want a story of los angeles privatization take a look at our parking tickets right <laughs> now uh the our, our parking enforcement has been leased out to xerox the copy machine company uh and ever since that happened in the 80s you have seen prices skyrocket on parking tickets. And that's why, because whenever for-profit entities enter into public goods, they fuck over the public for profit. Mm -hmm. Like that's why they're for profit. So, yeah, go, go to Flint, ask them how their water's doing. Exactly, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. And so we're just trying to, you know, money is a public utility. Like people don't really think about that that much. When you think of money, you think of wealth, like Scrooge McDuck's vault or whatever. But money is just how we as a country store value. And, and it's, 
It's for all of us. And there's no reason why, you know, six pasty bald dudes in New York are uh, profiting off of our entire system, you know? And, and meanwhile, you know, we've got the worst homelessness epidemic since the Great Depression happening, you know, on every street in Los Angeles. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your news on with Ron. 